In our last two Rise of Nations videos, we looked in depth at the unit counters from the first Ancient Age right the way up to the fifth Enlightenment Age. If you missed those, I'll leave a link in the description below. Today is the third installment where we look at the unit counters from the sixth Industrial Age up to the final eighth Information Age. Just a heads up that although we'll spend time on the sixth age, seven and eight won't take long as there's a lot of crossover. So let's get stuck in and make a start with the barracks in the 6th Industrial Age. The 6th Age represents World War I. As such, our previous musketeers become riflemen. The fusiliers become anti-tank units. We have two brand new units, the machine gun and flamethrower, and our trusty scout, who's now much more popular with the ladies as he's a commando with a gun and explosives. Now let's get into the details, starting with riflemen. They're pretty weak, but are a natural counter to anti-tank infantry, so combining them with tanks is very effective, and they can hold their own surprisingly well against armoured cars. However, riflemen are weak to tanks and machine guns, as you might expect. But used in large numbers, riflemen can be surprisingly deadly and are essential if you're attacking a city. Next up we have the anti-tank infantry, which are nice and easy because they're basically effective against vehicles, but they're weak against other infantry. You've already seen them against riflemen, now you can see them getting slaughtered by machine guns. No real surprises there, and this really highlights their lack of range too, so you may find with some careful micro you can keep your armour out of their range. Next up is the machine gun. Now, we've already seen how effective they are against infantry in general, but how do they fare against vehicles? They get slaughtered. Simple as that. The machine gun is very similar to the rifleman, but clearly much less mobile. Machine guns are great at defence, but leave the offence to riflemen. Next up is the flamethrower, which is primarily used against buildings, if you can get close enough to them, as their range is very short indeed. You can see they automatically force these riflemen to ungarrison from the stockade, and they do a good job against the building, but the riflemen take care of them pretty quickly. They get taken out by vehicles pretty quickly too. As you can see, the tanks don't take long at all, which makes sense, but let's see how quickly they can take down a barracks when they're not being shot at. They basically melt it, so flamethrowers are a bit niche, great at taking down buildings, but pretty weak to everything, and have an incredibly short range. You can't deny though, it's fun to watch them work. Finally, for the barracks, and potentially the most exciting, is the scout, who is now a big manly commando with a sniper and explosives. As a sniper, he's great against important targets such as a general or patriot. Although they can snipe less important units, that would be a bit of a waste. They can also lay explosives on tanks, if you can get close enough, and also on buildings. A few commandos can make short work of your opponent's most vital buildings, such as this library. How very commando-y of them. That's the barracks. Now let's move on to the stables, which you'll notice is now an auto plant, as all of your horses have magically turned into vehicles. In the Sixth Age, the stables, or auto plant, uh, becomes far simpler. You have an armoured car and a light tank. Let's start by looking at the light tank, as that is straightforward. They're strong against the armoured car, which is very logical, and we've already seen they're strong against infantry, with the exception of anti-tank infantry, which, again, is very logical. Light tanks are strong and versatile. As such, they should form a large chunk of your army if you have the oil to do so. Armoured cars are more difficult to pin down. We already know they're weak against light tanks, We've also seen they're weak against anti-tank infantry, and also surprisingly weak against riflemen. What are they good at? They perform well against flamethrowers and machine guns for a start. They also take down this general pretty quickly, so they can be useful taking down support units in general. They do have some anti-air capability, but that's not important at this stage. Armoured cars are fast, with half-decent range, but lack combat effectiveness against the most common units you'll see in your opponent's army, being the light tank, riflemen and anti-tank infantry. But they pack a punch against more specialist units, and their speed makes them useful for flanking, adding slightly more venom to their attack. Let's take a quick look at the factory, but this is mostly self-explanatory. The artillery is effective against buildings, 
and basically weak against everything else. The new unit is the anti-aircraft gun. You guessed it, good against aircraft. Then we have our old friend, the supply truck, which is weak against everything. Brand new in the sixth age is the airbase, but unfortunately all we can get is a biplane, which is pretty useless at the moment. It's obviously weak against anti-air units, as already discussed, and inflicts minimal damage against other units, though it is fun to watch two biplanes dogfighting over a city. The airbase gets a lot more exciting in the next age, but for now, let's finish age six with the docks. There has been some change at the docks, so let's waste no time going into the detail. Up to now, we've had a separate bomb vessel, which is only good at taking down buildings. That ship has disappeared, leaving us with three warships instead of four. Being strong against buildings has passed to the heavy ship, now called the Dreadnought, which is also strong versus light destroyers, making the Dreadnought a rather versatile ship. Moving on to destroyers, their job is basically protecting dreadnoughts by taking down aircraft and submarines. Speaking of which, submarines are strong against dreadnoughts, so we have a nice and traditional rock-paper-scissors arrangement in the dock for age six. We of course have fishermen, who are, well, strong against fish, I suppose. The dock is straightforward, but absolutely brutal. The units don't just counter, they melt each other, making it doubly important for you to have a balanced fleet and knowledge of the counters to survive at sea. That's everything for the sixth age, and the good news is that seven and eight will be very similar, but aircraft become far more dominant, which accurately reflects the increased use of air power in the Second World War compared to the first. But before we go into detail on that, let's have a quick overview of the barracks, factory, and auto plant in age seven. To be honest, there aren't many changes, so I just want to show you what the units look like. The counters are essentially the same, but it's worth noting that given the increase in air power, the importance of anti-air has increased. Bear in mind that it's possible for the bazooka to shoot planes, but it doesn't really do very much. With that out of the way, let's get stuck into the airfield, which has seen some exciting changes now we're in the Second World War. We now have improved fighters, new bombers, and a helicopter, each serving their own special purpose. The fighter is all about air superiority. If your opponent is going for bombers, you'd do well to invest in fighters to take them down before they reach your cities. They can also be used against ground targets, but their effectiveness is limited there. Bombers are, unsurprisingly, fantastic against buildings, but as we've already seen, are weak against fighters and, of course, anti-aircraft units. Their long range makes them deadly and a fantastic way to disrupt your opponent's economy or simply flatten their cities before your troops move into capture. You can even use your bombers against your opponent's army. It won't do much damage, but it could be the difference between you winning or losing a particular battle. So where does the helicopter fit into all of this? They absolutely melt tanks. I mean seriously melt them. If you ever have a tank problem, a squadron of choppers will sort that problem in no time. But beware fighters and other anti-air measures, as choppers are a glass cannon. They melt tanks but get melted themselves if you're not careful. While we're whizzing through the seventh age, we may as well disclose that the docks are also largely unchanged, except we now have massive and expensive aircraft carriers. Aircraft carriers are easily some of the best fun you will have in Rise of Nations. They're big, expensive, powerful units that can wreak havoc at long distances. And it's a big deal if you lose one. You can create seven fighter bombers, which are decent against a variety of ground units and not bad at taking out buildings, but you must protect your carrier as those fighters are its only way of defending itself. It's best they sail with a ring of steel to protect them from submarines or your expensive carrier will soon end up at the bottom of the ocean. It's such a great unit and easily one of my favourites. Before moving on to the eighth and final age, I wanted to highlight how many options there are for attacking buildings in the seventh age. Previously, we only had artillery, but now we also have bombers, ships, and missiles. Missiles are great against buildings and not bad against units. 
It's fun and effective to build some silos and using hotkeys you can help your troops take down an army or buildings. You really are spoilt for choice when it comes to blowing shit up. The Seventh Age is one of the most exciting in the game. Tanks are so strong and supported by infantry are a deadly force. But watch out for the choppers that will melt them before you know what's happening. You must be prepared to field anti-air units quickly to avoid catastrophe. Aircraft carriers are simply awesome, and we can't forget how deadly a squadron of bombers can be against buildings. Now we're on to the final age, number eight, the information age. This one will be quick as there are no substantial changes at the barracks, auto plant, factory, airfield or dock, apart from a few exceptions. The commando is now special forces, along with his usual skills. He now acts as a radar jammer for anti-air buildings or units, as long as he's close enough. Once you research stealth bombers, you'll notice the usual anti-air units and buildings can't target them. The only real option is to use fighters to take them down. Make sure you don't get caught out by that one. In this age, you can research nuclear missiles, which can either be incredibly fun or a terrible way to end the game. It just depends on your personal preference. Other than that, tanks are still the most powerful force out there, but you've got to protect them from the anti-tank and choppers. And you can take your pick how you would like to destroy buildings, as again, there are just so many options. Which age is your favourite to fight in? Personally, the Enlightenment Age gets my vote. Seeing all that smoke and the muskets and cannons, having the chance to flank with cavalry is some of the best RTS fun you can have. Tanks are awesome, but formations of muskets do it for me. Thanks for tuning in. If you want a specific video, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.